Okay, it's time again to make some zinc hexacyoferrate 3 nanoparticles. I have one gram of potassium ferric cyanide and one gram of zinc sulfate. I have 100 ml of distilled water for the zinc there and this will be the mixing chamber. 100 ml of distilled water here. Um, I've got my stir bars. I've got six stir bars of various sizes for $11 Australian, which ain't too bad. They're magnetic. I didn't think they were. I thought they were just metal. So um, I've tested one out and they work actually even better than that little steel rod I have. So I reckon I'm gonna go for that size one, which should be good. And uh, I'll um, mix this stuff up in its solutions and then I'll get to work. I'll be back. As you can see, the stair bar works much better and smoother. I think I might have chose this too small, I'm afraid, but it is stirring it up pretty well. I've stuck it down with some sticky tape folded around itself, just to stop any vibrations and losing my little jar while I'm not around. So I'm about to add my zinc sulfate. First drop. Another little drop. They say the slower you add the stuff, the better the, or the smaller the nanoparticles. So I'll take my time and um, I'll get back when I'll, oh, for an update. <clears throat> okay, so far so good. It's looking um, like orange juice. I've only added about nine mils of zinc sulfate so far in about 15 minutes. So I'm counting about 10 seconds every drop. There about. All right, I'll get back with them up there. It's getting thicker. Okay, so far so good. It's been one hour. I've added 20 mil in one hour. I changed the count to every three seconds out of drop. I might be going too slowly. Oh, you get that? I might have to pick it up though. I'll be here for another one, two, three hours at that rate. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, it's been an hour and 40 minutes and I have all the zinc sulfate in the solution. I was holding it up about there, dropping a drop every time it hit the liquid. I'd form another drop and drop it in. So I'll let that stir for about an hour or something. Go have some lunch. It's a nice orange colour. We didn't get the blue like I did with the metal stir bar. So I think it was successful. And um, we'll get it in some filter paper and see what we get. Okay, first time through the filter, I've collected a bit, a lot of it's still in solution, so I'll um, redo it a couple of times just to collect them as much as I can. There's a fair bit in there by the looks of it compared to last time. Yes. Alright, I'll filter it again a couple of times. Okay, I'm back. It's been four days of um, draining the solution. It's turned a greenish sort of weird colour there for some reason. Not sure why. I don't have too much left in the bottom of that. So I've filled it out most of it pretty well. It's quite dry. I kept it in this oven outside because it has a sort of slight bit of almond smell to it for some reason. 
So if you can see in there, there's not a real lot of wastage. Not sure if that would um, reactivate if I put some more zinc in there. Oh, there's probably real fine particles, but um, I can't get that out of there. So I'll um, crush up this stuff, collect it, weigh it, see how much we got, and I'll um, get back. Um, plus that little bit in there, I use two jars. You siphon it out with your little dropper and then tip the rest down into there several times. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I've managed to harvest or collect .93 grams of zinc hexacyoferrate nanoparticles. We had one gram of potassium ferrocyanide and one gram of zinc sulfate in our solutions and we um, retrieved 0 0.94 grams. So I'll um, light the other cell here. I'll have 0.22 grams of this stuff, 0.22 grams of graphite and 0.22 grams of zinc. I mean of feather carbons and we'll have a comparison of the contaminated stuff with the metal stir bar to the legit stuff without contamination and we'll see if the two cells are sort of similar. We'll just separate them with the paper towel to keep the same results and um, I'll just mix that stuff up and I'll be back. Oh and the binder will be cellulose acetate, homemade cigarette butt stuff. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, I've got the cell made. Um, I haven't got electrolyte in it yet. I've got one molar of zinc sulfate in this little tube. We're on the 20 volt range, adding electrolyte. The carbon will be um, probably dry at the moment. It's an identical cell to the last cell which I made. Okay, we're at 1.77 and I'll do a short circuit, try 200 range, 150 on a short circuit, uncharged. This is the uncontaminated zinc hexacyoferrate nanoparticle. We have massive voltage drop. Or I've got a loose set. Oh, it's on, it's on the amp reading. Don't worry about that. All right, we're at 1.75 after that short circuit. So um, let the electrolyte soak in for a bit, probably about a half hour or so. I'll keep damping it. I'm getting lazy now. I'm mixing my um, zinc sulfate with the mixer. Might as well use it. And um, a comparison cell, I didn't know it was going to work. I put 0.8 grams of manganese dioxide from a lantern battery mixed with the zinc hexacyoferrate nanoparticles. It sort of went well. I wasn't sure if it was going to catch on fire or anything, but it seems to be all right. So we'll try a zinc carbon version with the manganese. So I'll keep that cell for later, just as a comparison to see if it does actually increase its power density. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna run out of time for soaking them, so we're going to, what I have now is the manganese version of the cell hooked up, adding some electrolyte. We'll just get some more. I'll probably um, let it soak overnight once the electrolyte's mixed up. So we're at 1.79 and uh, 1.8 with the manganese dioxide version. And for a short circuit, oh, we're past the 200. So I'll put on the 10 amp range. It's on the 10, connecting. 
350 milliamps for the manganese dioxide version. Not too bad. Before charge. And a voltage drop. Check the voltage again. And it hasn't soaked in yet. And we dropped in voltage a bit, but I'll um, keep adding electrolyte. And I'll see what there are tomorrow when the carbon's fully soaked overnight and the air's all out of it. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, I had the manganese dioxide cell ready for a charge. Uh, it's not the next day. I couldn't wait. It should be alright. I've done it with the other cells anyway, so we might as well just do it. Um, got the voltage on. The charge voltage is going to be 2.2, I think. It's hard. It's only got a potential ometer to adjust the stuff power. Connecting. Yeah, 2.2 it is. And 61 milliamps going into it so far, so I'll give it half hour on charge and see what happens. Okay, this manganese zinc hexacyoferrate cell has been on charge for 44 minutes. And just disconnecting the charge now. And connecting the data logger to the other end. So we should have voltage in a couple of minutes. Okay. Our voltage is at 2. Not looking too bad. I have a 10 milliamp load. Same as the last tests. Separated by paper towel. And it's got like 1.2 grams. Had to add extra manganese dioxide because it's really heavy. And I wasn't going to get the surface area of the little cell as the same, so that's why I added 0.8 grams. I could have probably added a bit more because it wasn't quite covering the surface of about the same as the last cell we tested. So here we go. All right, everything's looking not too bad. And uh, I'll get back. Okay, the cell's been running for 53 minutes and we're still at 1.5 volts, 16 milliwatt hours and 9 milliamp hours. Hmm. So it's looking good. Now we'll keep it running, see how long it actually goes for. The only thing about this cell, the uh, manganese dioxide may deplete and the cell's life isn't going to be as long. So <clears throat> if I keep charging it up and find out, we'll see how it goes. Uh, till the next update. Okay, manganese dioxide and zinc. Hexocyoferric cell, whatever. Uh, hour and 33 minutes so far, 16 milliamp hours and 25 milliwatt hours it's running for. I probably could have put a 30 milliamp load on this cell. Uh, I'll be back. Okay, the cell's now at nearly two and a half hours and 25 milliamp hours and 36 milliwatt hours. <laughs> Looking alright for the first run. And the electrolyte is pretty clean. I think some of the zinc sulfate's dropping out. So it needs a stir tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure if it's going to run the same tomorrow. It's uh, 1.1 volts at the moment and holding strong. Ah, Alright, I'll be back. I'm back again. We're nearly at 3 hours for this cell. 30 milliamp hours, 41 milliwatt hours and it's 0 0.9 volts. I have to unfortunately go out, so I'm canning the experiment. Uh, I'll charge it up tomorrow for 45 minutes again and see if we actually get our three hours as well. That should tell us anyway if the cell is going to charge up and discharge and hold the same capacity. Sorry about that, but I just have to go. So it's not too bad a run. If you, when you see the um, coating I actually made on the cell, it's not very pretty. It sort of dried out too much. It was 39 degrees today Celsius. And the... Um, Cellulose acetate evaporated a bit too quick before I could get it 
sort of level on the cell so it's sort of missing and it's not that coated that well. I was surprised it was actually going to run this long. Alright, so till the next charge for this cell. Just turned it off. Uh, voltage bounce back is 1.1 already and climbing just for a comparison. So it's still got some charge in it. Alright, till tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day for the zinc hexocyoferrate manganese dioxide cell. Dropped down to 1.4 volts after that discharge. And uh, I'll just connect it ready for another charge and we'll see if it can actually run for the same duration as it did yesterday. That should sort of tell us what's going on with the cell. So connecting the charge, I think it's still too, it should be set to 2.2 volts. Set the monitoring. Okay, connecting charge now. Yeah, all right, we're at 2.1 volts. Must be a heat discrepancy. It's 45 degrees C here today. We're 100 milliamps this time. I think we weren't as high. I think it was around about 60 milliamps. So I'll let that sort of slowly dissipate and around about 45 minutes for a charge. Okay, the charge is at 45 minutes, nearly 46. We're still at 17 milliamps, so I reckon I'll, I'll go put a coffee on and then come back and see if it's dropped a little bit. Because before I think it was 5 milliwatts left in the cell. Uh, the voltage curve's not too bad. It had a little hiccup here for some reason. And then it's stable. Okay, the cell's been on charge for an hour. It's sort of dropped down. Anyway, sitting at 2.19 uh, volts. So I'll um, disconnect the charger, reset the log, data logger. Okay, we should have a voltage. Alright, now we should have a voltage. We're at 2 volts. Stop the monitoring. And starting the second discharge on the cell. Hopefully it does the same as it did yesterday. Or maybe a bit better. And I have an idea. I might fill up one of these um, lantern battery cells with the zinc hexocyoferrate and manganese mix. It'll take a while to get enough um, zinc nanoparticles to fill that, considering I get one gram, or oh, 0.9 of a gram each time I do a batch. So that might be the next lot of videos after the test runs of this to actually make a battery. Should be an interesting thing. I'll also compare the short circuit on that one to the other one. All right, I'll let this run and I'll get back. Okay, back. The cell ran for 2 hours and 51 minutes this time, so it's slightly decreasing over time. 39 milliamp hours and 30 milliwatt hours. So that will be all for that cell. Um, we'll be testing the um, cell next to it, which has been 24 hours soaking, which is a duplicate to the last cell we tried, but that one was contaminated with metal, metal particles. So I'll um, give it a charge up for an hour and see what happens. I'm going to keep to the 2.2, 2.1 volts for the charge on it and we'll see what we get. Okay, we went right up to 2.2 and then it's slowly dropping again and um, I'm not sure what happened here and there in the cell. This is the um, standard cell with the zinc hexocyanoferrate. Alright, so I'll disconnect the charger. It's had 47 minutes on charge. And connect the other end. We should have a voltage again. 
All right, we're at two volts. It's looking all right. And this stop monitor, and we have 10 milliamp load again. This one won't run as long as the manganese dioxide cell, or it shouldn't. This is an exact duplicate to the other, the original cell, but with non-contaminated zinc nanoparticles. <clears throat> All right, we'll see what we get. Should be around about 13 milliwatts, or a bit more if it's um, got a difference between the metal contamination and the non-metal contamination. Okay, total run time for the cell was 53 minutes, still running, but we're not going to register much here. It's 9 milliamp hours and 8 milliwatt hours. So I think the um, non-contaminated version of the zinc Texas active material is a bit better than the contaminated with steel version. Same content, it was the feather carbons, 0.22 grams. Uh, graphite 0.22 grams and the active zinc material 0.22 grams. So the cells are quite identical. Somewhat way down on the um, manganese dioxide version, but that's understandable because that works well. So not a bad run. Um, I'll see if it does increase because the other cell did go up to 13 milliamp hours or something, or milliwires, one of them, if I can remember rightly. So um, I'll give it another charge tomorrow and we'll see, I'll put two, I'll do one more test on this video, it's getting a bit long. Alright, so I'll do the um, voltage recovery, sort of jumping up quickish. Alright, we'll see what it is at tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day. The rebound voltage was 1.1 volts. And I'm about to set a charge for an hour. And connecting the charge, same charge voltage. It was 2.2 um, .2 or 2.1. Ah, oh, it's less today. Oh no, there we go. 2.1. Okay, so I'll be back in an hour. And 60, oh no, what was it? Nearly 100 milliamps, so 90. Yeah. All right, we'll see how it performs today. It has to sort of get 13 milliamps to be the other first original cell. Hopefully it does, because that was contaminated material, which may add extra. Okay, the cell seems to be um, stable in its charge this time. It's been sitting at five milliamps for the last 22 minutes. So I don't think it's going to increase anymore, so it must be at max capacity or something. So I'll um, disconnect the charge and connect the data logger to the um, cell itself. Okay, we should have a voltage now. Okay, we're at 2 volts holding, sort of. Stop the monitoring. And we'll do another discharge, second discharge for this cell. Hopefully it's improved. I think it was 9 milliamp hours last run for an hour. <clears throat> All right, voltage is sort of dropping fairly quick. All right, I'll get back. Okay, for the second run, only 38 milliamps. Um, I think the cell didn't turn out well because it was a 45 degree day when I put the um, cellulose acetate into the carbon mix. Because uh, they should be around about the same. I think a lot of the material actually stuck to the container and not on the cell itself. And uh, I'll let the cell dry out. Oh. Yeah. I'll probably let the cell dry out and um, scrape it off and sh or actually show you the surface of it. It's pretty disgusting actually. I'm surprised it actually worked. All right, I'll do that tomorrow. All right, I'm back. It's been a couple of days since we've had the test cells running. I've um, pulled them apart. This was the first one with the um, contaminated zinc hexacyoferrate material with the metal stir bar. See, the coating is much smoother. This cell actually was still working. 
But uh, due to the hot day and the cellulose acetate, um, that was my coating of the other one in the last test, which didn't really perform too well. I'm taking it, there's something wrong, it's sort of flaking off. And it's a bit rough. And the manganese version of the cell is also a bit rough like that one there. So it's quite hard to use the cellulose acetate um, membrane. Um, we'll just weigh it up, I'll scrape it off. And we'll see how much actual material we do have on those cells. So this was the newest cell. So it didn't really bind, that came off quite easy. And for the weight of it, plus binder. Point 0.7 grams of material. So that's that one, and we'll try the other one. The original contaminated material. I think I'll just go back to painting it on paper and trying to coat it. Seems to be a better way to do it. <clears throat> okay, and the contaminated version, 0.5 grams. So that one performed way better with less carbon and stuff on it than the second attempt at the cell. So what I'll do is, um, Add that back in there. I'm going to recycle it. It should just melt down with acetone added to it. And I'm going to um, add the remainder of the active material I've made, which would be, I think it's kind of like 0 0.3, almost 0 0.3 of a gram. So I'll make another test cell with all of this combined. So we should have about 0 0.7 grams of the zinc hexacyoferrate material in the carbon and around about 0.24, yeah, about 0.6 grams of um, carbons. So we're about 1.5 all up in our next cell battery, but I won't put this on, I'll make a new video for that one. So um, thanks for watching. Oh, we'll check the zinc plates out. This was the original one, which had about 60 charges. Hopefully the paper towel is somewhat stuck to it. So we sort of have some build up. See where the grooves are? So the paper towel is probably missing bits in between. If you can see the shape there, they're sort of raised. So there's something building up on them. And for the other one, which has only had a couple of charges, and sort of wasn't performing too well. Similar sort of effect. I'm having trouble trying to get some tracing paper from local suppliers in my town, so I'm gonna order some on eBay. No one uses tracing paper anymore. I could probably use printing paper, but I'm not sure if, it's, if some of this stuff has wax on it. Um, so yeah, so I'll um, see how the extra material in this and hopefully that, that should melt down. I've done it before, I've melted stuff back down with just acetone. Alright, so that will be it for this cell. Sort of a bit disappointing results, but well, hopefully the extra material in the cell might actually work a bit better. And plus, the original cell had pretty high voltage going through it. And I don't know if it's carbon or bits of zinc coming off of that one. Okay, thanks for watching.